Phantomancer picked up with Phantomancer, Grimstroke, Lion, Doom. You go for the Double Doom, Double Finger. You've got your two supports in the line of the Grimstroke with some significant lockdown. The Ink Swell as well as the uh, uh, Earth Spike. Remaining. Things are okay. Five seconds remaining. And as for Royal, we've been seeing them a little bit recently with September DDC. Uh, fly by eight nine seven and the one more player who doesn't actually have a call out name, which is a bit odd. So let's see what they want to do. Phantom Lancer here for Keen Gaming, trying to overwhelm this Royal Academy team. I think we've seen them with this Venom Lancer before. It was in that third game against LGD where it just seemed like they were getting overwhelmed when a team was able to work on them early. Uh, this lineup here from Keen Gaming, at least for now, I mean, even pre-6, if you have the right tools, this dude can do quite a, mi quite a bit. And then when he hits 6, it gets, of course, even easier. Radiant team back. But now they will work with the Underlord. So support nature's profit? with either a mid or a safe lane Veno. I'm not too sure about this lineup at the moment. We have three off laners on this team in the Veno, Nature's Prophet, and the Underworld. We've seen the Veno and the off lane previously, the Nature's Prophet as well, and now the Underworld comes in. He's played in the off lane from time to time, or mostly. Final bans for both teams. So... Let's see what they ban out last. You're dealing with a Phantom Lancer that's going to be in the safe lane. Uh, or you have a Phantom Lancer that's going to be in the safe Dollar lane with the off lane back. of the Doom. Sniper gets banned out, which was a hero that Royal went to previously that they just did not play that well. And I do need a mid for both sides. Shadow Fiend is still available. We saw that for OGD against Royal Academy in their game three. Five seconds remaining. Thirty-four seconds remaining in the previous series. Let's take a look. They these two teams have played each other already. They played each other earlier today. It was a 2-1 victory for Royal Academy. First game, uh, they did use that Sniper, Venomancer, Darkseer, Pango, Venge against Tide, OD, PA, Lion, Abaddon. And that was a 22-minute win for Royal Academy. Radiant team pick. And there's the Shadow Fiend. And I was talking about. We saw OGD play that and it did work out really well for them. Depending on who's where, I could really see this being a, a quicker lineup from Ten Royal Academy. Remaining. Select your hero. And they go to Rubik. And it will be a Yi Rubik mid. Old Chicken safe lane. Old 11 in the off lane. With Dark and Kaka supporting. Off lane flyby. 897 mid with the Shadow Fiend. Support Nature's Prophet. And Venge. And a safe lane Venomancer.
So a bit of a weird constructed lineup here for Royal Academy and, and well, the Rubik for Keen Gaming. I was not expecting that as the last pick here. So we'll see who's able to pull this off as they do have a lot of control for Keen. Royal Academy, you don't normally go to the Pit of Malice too early. Sprout, Magic Missile. Well, for Keen, it's Telekinesis, Inkswell, Earth Spike, Infernal Blade. I think Keen Gaming has a quick lineup that can put a lot of pressure on the Royal Academy. Need to be very careful. So here we go, game one between these two teams. Prepare for battle. To see who will be in the upper bracket against Vici. And I guess the the matchup I'm looking forward to the most. In terms of this laning phase, it's definitely Yi against 897. So, a four man smoke could come out from Keen Gaming as they're wrapping around. Possibly to find somebody over towards top. Inside the tree is an out of arm's way, at least for the moment, is this Venomancer. With four heroes coming towards these bounty runes, and they place this ward. I'll get them a little bit of vision if somebody comes over to see where the lanes are going. As for bottom, they've got their mid ward for both teams. As well as a ward on the high ground here. Begins. So we'll be two bounty runes apiece. No first blood coming out pre horn. I think they're looking to see where old 11 and old chicken are going to be going as they'll send old 11 towards top. And this ward, I believe, spotted Sep up there. And it will now spot that flyby is making his way towards top, too. So let's see if that changes the matchups here for Keen Gaming if they want something different. Or if even Royal Academy wants something different. Right away, dealing with these raises, a lot of damage coming out onto this Rubik. We went to that first level of the Fade Bolt. Need to be a little bit careful. DDC with this Venomancer bottom. Grab themselves a quick little deny, and they will send the Venomancer towards top. So Venomancer comes in, a little bit of musical lanes, as Flyby will attempt to TP towards bottom. And there he goes to be up against this Doom. So... The Doom down here, looking over at DDC. Grimstroke hitting away. And towards top. Venomancer trying to do all he can in terms of farming up against this Nature's Prophet and the Venomancer. Spike comes through, but they don't really have much follow-up that's going to get them... A ...kill this early on. I would say a trialing possibly with the Doom, but... ...of course, Doom is... ...your poor and Possibly Grimstroke if he had Ink Swell to give, but he's got Phantom's Embrace and Stroke of Fate. So, over mid, we take a look again. 10 and 2 here for the Shadow Fiend to the 8 and 4 of the Rubik. They are sitting about even. For right now, the Rubik is ahead, but Creep's coming towards this Shadow Fiend. That's 
heavy into the Fade Vault. None of the telekinesis just yet, but Lion getting low, running away, gets that salve off set. Very close to getting himself an early kill. Old Chicken now on the run. With Treants and Creeps chasing. And will attempt to turn around into the face of set. Around towards mid, DDC coming in, trying to possibly get Yi here. Help out this Shadow Fiend. I bring a three, third hero over top with the Grim Stroke. He is level three, so he does have one on the Ink Swell. DDC waiting for his moment to move in. The Rubik already pretty close by. Nature's Prophet coming out as well. Fade Bolt Telekinesis, but they've got the Magic Missile with Sep over mid, and they will draw first blood. So it seemed to be early aggression from Keen Gaming has turned around into Royal Academy throwing their aggression over towards mid, grabbing that kill early on the Rubik. Who is doing an alright job at level four, one, two, one, to start it off. Dyer's top tower is under attack. But again, wondering if RNG can do anything. More than that kill over mid. DDC in trouble as they lose old 11 bottom. Inkswell, Phantom's embrace, Earth Spike comes in. They will clean up DDC, but they lose old 11 bottom. He comes back, but they've got the Venomancer and going up and around, at least for now, and staying nearby is Flyby. Still sitting at even. No surprise. As they go again over bottom for this Doom, and they'll get yet another kill. Both of these coming with two in the Atrophy Aura. So an early free six damage. And truth be told, that's a really good start for this Underlord, who has now moved over towards top. Slow down that Doom from getting that level six. Ramp yourself up with six extra damage. Dark chasing DDC. Just throwing these pot shots. And he's got the ink swell. Which does land as the magic missile came a little bit late. But he's been baiting him in this entire time. Looking for the stroke of fate. Won't land it. And now he's dead to September. Another kill here for Royal Academy. And again, continuing to just pressure Keen Gaming early. It's been those kind of lineups that I've seen a lot of success in. So far as the Magic Missile comes out on Akaka, the Earth Spike follows it up, but he's still dead. September gets himself on a killing spree 3 0 0. It's been those early aggressive lineups that have found a lot of success, at least today. September goes over towards mid. They might have another one on Yi here. But they rotate Kaka in. Things getting really dicey so far for Keen Gaming. Already feels like a game where they're going to be heavily reliant on whether or not this Phantom Winter has a good start. Are just for the moment farming away practically for free. It will start to go over for this Underlord, but he's already level six. Quite tanky, has the Pit of Malice with the Firestorm level three. Top Ganger rewarding it all. The Phantom is embraced as well as the Ink Swell. That'll stun a flyby, but actually, from the Pit of Malice, almost a little bit short. Does get it, they'll get the kill. Old Chicken gets that one. They rotate a couple over. But old 11 now. Spotted by DDC as well as Sep. Sprout comes in. Venomous Gale is there. The attempt at the TP. And the damage just not enough. Wait, what? 
He TP'd- What? The ultimate Jabate! But- He didn't Jabate anybody! He died still! And now he might die! But the telekinesis comes in, they've got the Earth Spike. Locking in DDC. So Keen at least find one. What did I just witness? Dark being chased by 897. Two raises hit. Not needing the nature's profit. Another kill here for the Royal Academy. And coming behind the tower looking for Kaka. With the help of this Venomancer. Another easy kill. This is some... Crazy aggression from Royal. And they're actually looking over mid again. Then a scale thrown at the SF. They've got the ink swell. Should have this kill. He's hexed up. And he's killed up. They did have the raise too, so he threw the gale, he got the raise, but now any exit kills Royal will get are gonna feel quite nice. They get at least one. Rubik for the Shadow Fiend. They do rotate quite a bit on this. And this flyby has been spotted. They've got old 11, he does have Doom, immediately will be used. Old Chicken trying to body block, Ink Soil out again. The Phantoms and Grace silencing him up, but taking a lot of damage as the raise is coming from 897 to get the kill. They're still working on the Underworld, but in a lot of trouble is the Phantom Lancer. He needs to get out of this. Tokinesis just keeping him alive with the long range raise, and now, not one, not two, but possibly three. The raise actually missed. Could have been a kill, and instead, the finger comes out. The Pit of Malice is there, and it will hold Kaka in long enough for the raise to come out from 897. And kill the lion who had taken out this nature's prophet with the finger. So, 10 minutes in. Switch it over to net worth. See that the three leading right now are from Royal. Got a good lead. And got a really good thing going with this early aggression. Grab the tier one over mid. Pit analysis can potentially lead for some good requiems and mobility for this if they want to get somewhere quick or get out quick. Radiant's they can commit and if they attack. feel it going wrong, they back off. King Gaming coming over towards top. Inner scale did hit onto the doom. Four heroes here for Royal Academy as 897 continuing to farm. He's going into the drums and then the Sanjin Yasha. Seppu is supporting. He is without boots, but he's got Vlad's and a medallion. He is very farmed in this four spot. Uh, <laughs> More farm than four of the heroes on the side of Keen. That's just how bad it's been going. So, Venomancer Spirit Vessel. 
pushing bottom 897. We'll also get the Nutrius Profits coming and help. They've got these creeps moving up. September and 897. Doing a significant amount of damage to the Tier 2 Tower and waiting for somebody to rotate from Keen Gaming. Also got DDC here and making their way over will be a majority of the Keen Gaming side with Old Chicken, but they've already lost the Tier 2. Trying to chase 897. We'll see if they are have enough to catch up seem just too far behind but kaka looking for the earth spike and he lands it but now the swap gets him further away they've got the magic missile the finger comes out the raise is through but four heroes here for king gaming the ulti being thrown from the nature's prophet as over top the look for the doom old 11 rod of atos here comes september and he is ending the life of old 11 and they will lose ddc but they get the kill on old 11 they are happy with that bottom but they get a tier 2 tower they get a kill over top they work on this tier 2 tower top and again continuing to just mount an immense amount of pressure on the king gaming where every move has a consequence at the moment and it's this it's hard to kind of grasp when everything you do has consequences. You want something to be successful 100% through. But if you go bottom, you defend bottom, and one person doesn't go, that means you're going to lose, you know, you lose that hero. If you stay top, you're going to lose that tower. You move over to help out bottom, you're going to lose that top tower too. But if you go top to defend the tower, you're sacrificing free farm to the shadow fiend so everything that the king gaming has done so far has come with consequences well they've got themselves the pit of malice on a couple of these heroes coming from behind will be the shadow fiend will get the kill on a dark eve falls as well to try to defend over top and well they lose two heroes for it eight thousand net worth lead and again, Royal Academy just ripping through this Keen Gaming lineup. And they will go into the Roche Pit following. Nobody coming over from Keen Gaming. Finger in eight. As the earth spike, finger in four. Should be dead. If they can hold him here long enough, won't even need the finger. They've got four heroes to get the kill on the Venomancer. And that was one of the first times I can kind of remember as of recent in the last ten minutes or so that they haven't really had something successful happen without paying a consequence. But as I say that, pressure's coming out on the tier 2, and now you have to answer to this. Rod of Atos, and oh boy. Hit him, Alice. There's the raises. There's the easy kill, and the pressure will continue. This is some perfect play from Royal Academy right now. And the swap on a dark. They've got the Rod of Atos onto the Rubik. Inkswell. Trying to get away from this one, but one more shot comes in from 897. The finger hits on a DDC. He gives up his life. And it looks like they'll grab themselves another tier two. Mm, actually, off that. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. A little TP. That's over bottom. That's 25 permanent atrophy aura. So, 
full talents worth right now. Thousand net worth lead. Just phase boots drums for this doom. Nature's Prophet, who started in the four position, has boots, Vlad's, and the medallion going into a hex. And he's getting quite a bit of quite a bit of gold for it too. up is you know they're on the high ground September will use that ulti and again forcing back keen gaming dagger for the line earn for the grim stroke a couple of items coming their way this is their last outer tower that they have in only really defending it slightly. These plague wards, that's it. So, a Royal Academy, it, it just overwhelming this radiant side. And they do have the Diffusal Blade here on the Phantom Lancer. We'll see if that ends up kind of turning the tides a little bit. Or if he needs a little bit more, I would say he probably wants to farm another item before he fights. The question is, does he get that kind of time? Oh, they find old 11. Wave of Terror comes out. And they do have swap ready as he'll try to walk away from 897. But more are coming. September's here, Rod of Atos on the Yi. He gets blown up. They see Dark and, well, they don't really care about that ulti that they that he's placed on them. They get two more kills. They look for the tier three. Extra 140 damage for this Underlord at the moment. And they're just not wasting time. The swap comes in. They've got the stun. The Rod of Atos, another kill here. Three dead for Keen Gaming. Not only is this a 20 minute tier three, but this is a 20-minute set of racks, and they're not stopping there. They're going for the bottom tier three, and they're gonna get it. Firestorm, Underward, and a little bit of trouble. The Requiem comes out, and now they've got the finger. They throw the Doom onto the Underward. It's everything for one person, but is it gonna be enough to get these exit kills? Royal trying to run away. They've got the Sprout on Old Eleven. He ends up dying. The Earth Spike lands onto the Shadow Fiend as well as the Token. He says they lift him up, but they're going to lose two on the back lines. There goes the Grimstroke. X once more. That's on the Vengeful Spirit. They end up losing three on Royal Academy. They take out two. They finish a set of racks. They don't get that tier three by a sliver over bottom, but well worth it in the end. This is the PL showing a little bit of promise with just the defusal. But he's really the only one. Look at the difference in net worths. This lion has the second highest net worth. That is one of their supports that is outperforming not only their mid, but their offlaner. There's an opportunity always in all these games. But down 15,000 net worth. Yeah, Dota Plus has it right. It, it's a 3% chance. They would have to play absolutely perfect. Radiance bottom shrine to have a chance attack. at bringing this game back and Unfortunately, that's not what we've been seeing so far from keen gaming I 
have been seeing it for the most part from Royal Academy. 2-1-0. Oh, they're TPing towards top. Got the body blocks here. Old 11 trying to find an escape. These treants are giving him a lot of trouble, and that gives them more than enough time to get the Rod of Atos, the Venomous Gale, and an easy kill. Radiance top shrines under attack. Mm. Have the hex on the Nature's Prophet. And they will take this top shrine too. Radiance top shrine has fallen. Nature's Prophet. Once again, now the hex onto the lion. They've got the sprout, the attempt at the TP. And all the damage. Swap on the Nature's Prophet, not the right target. They push back the lion and. Well. Down goes the tier three. Now the Hex with the stun landing on the two. Is that going to be enough? They've got the Soulbind under the Underworld as well as this Shadow Fiend. They'll pop the BKB, but Kaka's already dead. He'll buy back immediately. Now the Poison is oh, but will be used by the next, uh, by the Venomancer. Look at Dark, who's dead as well. He doesn't have buyback. The stun hits two once more. They're looking for the Underworld. They lift him up. They get the kill. He's dead for 48 seconds. The Hex comes out into the Shadow Fiend. The Poison Nova is starting to take these heroes away on the side of Keen Gaming as well as the Venomous Gale that came out from the Venomancer onto the Phantom Lancer. He's trying to run away, but the Spirit Vessel on top of him is making this quite difficult. And there's the Wave of Terror as well as the damage from Sep to clean him up. He's dead for 50, and that could just be it. Bottom rack's gone, mid rack's gone. Let's head over top. Clean everything up. Hex on the old 11. Inkswell on top. He ends up popping, but no way he's able to escape. Dominating for 897. Got the swap as well as the magic missile again here on the Yi. BKB is going to be popped by the Shadow Fiend. The body box coming out from DDC. The buyback immediately from Yi. He'll steal the wave of terror, but is that really worth your buyback? Mega Creeps being announced. GG will be called by Keen Gaming. Royal Academy will take game one over Keen Gaming. Just 26 minutes in, 29 to 12. 26,000 net worth advantage. So this new lineup from Royal Academy, when they've made a little bit of a roster shuffle between the two teams, has kind of worked out for them. Uh, at least with Royal Academy, uh, they actually their main squad is already eliminated. But seven one and sixteen for the four position Nature's Prophet, four one and sixteen for the Safe Lane Venomancer, thirteen two and seven for eight nine seven in the mid. Uh, Shadow Fiend doing a whole heck of a lot. I mean, second highest hero damage for position four. Uh, really good game here from Royal Academy. It's uh, getting a little bit late. It's 8.30 in the morning. We'll be back with game two, hopefully soon. And we'll be back uh, quickly to give you game two. So I'm your caster, Bcop, at Bcop92 on Twitter. I guess I just want uh, some more shards. See you in a moment.